Today, more than ever, it's cities that are defining the future. The United Nations projects that by 2050, nearly 70% of the world's population will be city dwellers. As cities continue to grow, it has become increasingly vital to find better ways of managing these populations and the services they require. Densely populated cities consume two-thirds of the world's energy and produce a similar proportion of global carbon emissions. This places cities at the heart of the climate change discussion. The question is, how can we develop an electrical infrastructure that's economical and maintains our quality of life? And then how can we integrate more renewable energy sources into that infrastructure so that we can radically reduce our impact on the environment? I know. Oof. With cities growing, it's no surprise that they are looking to redefine their energy distribution systems. So, what needs to change anyways? In the 20th century, the energy production landscape was traditionally dominated by gas and coal and was distributed via a centralized grid. Power flowed in one direction, from plant to end user. In recent years, the world has seen disastrous power outages. With recurring hurricanes, wildfires and storm surges, calls for new, more modern power grids are getting louder. So, what if power was local? In an intelligent power grid or smart grid, energy producers, storage and consumers are digitally linked. Supply and demand is coordinated through energy management systems and constant measurement of energy. This way, energy is produced, stored and distributed more efficiently. Microgrids are the smallest units of smart grids. They are local energy systems which can protect communities or critical infrastructure from wider outages. Microgrid projects offer a glimpse into how locally distributed energy can improve system resilience. There are projects all over the world and one is here in Amsterdam. To be precise, it's in Bolkslotterham in the north of the Dutch capital. Welcome to Schroonsrip, the sustainable floating community. Schroonsrip is a floating complex with a current total of 47 households in 30 residential units. The team behind Schroonsrip aimed to create an urban ecosystem that addresses systematic causes of climate change with an intelligent energy system. Today we're in the Schoonschip community and right now we're looking at the technical installations uh, inside of the community center, which every single household at Schoonschip has uh, yeah, a similar setup. Every household of Schoonschip is equipped with a number of things, like solar panels and heat pumps. And all of these systems are actually connected here to the My Power Grid energy management system. And that is in real time measuring what's happening uh, within the household with its own solar production. But that's also communicating centrally with a cloud-based uh, system that is getting data from all of the houses. But the system doesn't only store the data. It takes the weather and solar information into account in order to optimize each household's energy production. And so using that data, uh, this computer is constantly processing, uh, what should I do? Uh, should I charge the battery? Should I discharge it? Should I store energy as heat using the heat pump? Uh, and so it's connected with these various devices here in order to enable uh, the operation of the smart grid. That box is Schoonschrip's connection to the public grid. And it does need that connection. During summer, the community could run self-sufficiently for quite some time but it's tougher in winter. Less sun and more energy that is needed for heating. So far so good from the technical side, but what is it like to live like this and to share all your data for everyone to see? That's what I ask Peer. He has been living at Schoonsrib for a bit over a year. Well, it has been debated, of course. Do we really want to, to have this in, in, in this way? And do we really want to share this data? Yep. And we know how important these data are 
for a bigger system yeah, because we want to enroll this whole system in this, not only this, this neighborhood but all over uh, the country yeah. and even in European wide, etc. Et so we, we realize that it's needed to have a sort of open mind. So what's next on the agenda for Schoonschip? The next step with this project is to actually connect Schoonschip together with other communities in the area, setting up an entire district level smart grid where all of the communities and different households and businesses uh, can connect to in order to, uh, on one hand, exchange energy with each other, but also to be able to uh, yeah, monetize their sources of flexibility to help balance the national network. By the way, Sronsrip works with a lot of open source technology. That way, other projects can use the technology and combine it with their own ideas. I think somewhere in the coming years, you know, we'll see much more and more of these projects. And you can also see, I mean, we started, what I said, 10 years ago and the more the technical stuff and, and uh, were designed like four or five years ago. And you can, I mean, innovation is going very rapidly. Yeah. So I think yeah. the next project will have even more smarter systems than we do. Decentralizing energy production and making citizens play an active part in this is crucial for the energy transition. But there's certainly more to it. Already today, we are surrounded by smart energy elements. Sometimes more visible and sometimes less. Amsterdam is setting up smart lighting systems in different areas throughout the city. That means municipalities can control the intensity of streetlights depending on where they are located. Movement sensors ensure that streetlights reach their maximum intensity when people or vehicles pass them. They return to the lowest point when there's no one around. A lot of these streetlights in Amsterdam are equipped with LED technology and are powered by solar panels and wind turbines. That way they stay independent from the general power grid, which also saves money on wiring and infrastructure. Smart! Police departments and traffic officers can also increase the maximum intensity of the streetlights in the event of an emergency. Examples like this prove that redefining energy use can go hand in hand with enhancing our quality of life. Okay, okay, one more thing. If we talk about smart energy, we obviously need to talk about cars. Electric cars are an important part of decarbonization and air quality efforts, especially in cities. There are currently almost 200,000 electric vehicles in the Netherlands. That's a national market share between 10 and 15 percent. Electric car sales are expected to go up in the future. By 2030, the number will increase tenfold. While that's good news, it also means that a new problem arises. Handling the extra demand generated by all these energy-hungry cars is one of the key challenges in future cities. That's where smart charging comes into play. So smart charging is, uh, is, is, is steering your charging session, either delaying at, a, at what time your charging session starts or reducing uh, the power output of your charging session. Uh, and this has many benefits, but the three most looked for are uh, balancing the energy market, uh, avoiding a local net congestion, and thirdly, uh, uh, reducing the cost of charging your car. Electric cars are often plugged in for a longer time than they actually need to be. With smart charging, cars can be plugged in, but charged when it's the most efficient, both cost and grid-wise. This is regulated via a cloud-based software, which analyzes information from the charging station in real time. If the grid works to capacity during the day, the software could decide to only charge the car during low demand periods at night. And smart charging allows for other features too, such as a two-way power flow. Bidirectional charging allows you to further uh, improve the added value of smart charging uh, because now you can not only delay the session but you can also deliver back the energy at some point in time when for instance there is not enough energy available and now you can uh, deliver that energy from the, um, uh, the battery pack in your car. That way citizens are no longer just energy consumers but also producers. For all that to function properly we need the right infrastructure. Smart things don't necessarily have to look smart. This is an electric charging station. Around 55,000 of these are all over the Netherlands and the Dutch government aims to have around 1.8 million in the country by 2030. Quite a task. One of the people taking it on is Peter Lojestein. 
He is the project manager for MIA Electris, a non-profit government joint venture. He and others make sure that the charging infrastructure meets certain technological standards to cope with the expected rise in e-mobility. That includes only using renewable energy, minimizing waste during production and maintaining the charging stations. Looking at the energy usage of a common household, everybody would be driving an electric car in that household, the energy demand of such a household would double. If it would only double without uh, smart charging, we're in quite a lot of uh, uh, problems. If we do smart charging, we can reduce that uh, with, with a lot and we can keep uh, scaling up uh, the energy transition and electromobility. The energy transition requires fundamental structural changes in our existing energy systems. These have to happen on a local and global level. Either way, digitalization will play a decisive role in all that. The vision for the future energy sector is a fully digitized system where uh, all these kind of technologies are communicating with each other using smart algorithms, uh, being able to actually manage uh, the grid networks and uh, the balance of supply and demand using millions of distributed devices that communicate with each other uh, and enable a much more efficient uh, yeah, and affordable energy transition for all.